morning, guys, and welcome to Costa Rica Real Estate and Investing. Today, we discuss design, construction, and permitting in Costa Rica with Roberto Meza, owner of Sfera Sostenible. It's a company that does consulting and construction, focusing on sustainable projects throughout Latin America. Him and his team have undertaken a variety of projects, everything from commercial uh, to residential, villas and condos, but with a focus on Costa Rica. So let's get into it and ask him some great questions. Remember, if you do have any questions for future guests, please comment away either here or on Facebook. And remember to subscribe in the link below. Thanks very much, guys. Let's get into it. Hey, guys, welcome to Costa Rica Real Estate Investing. Uh, today, we have Roberto Meza from Sefira Sostenible, uh, a company that focuses on sustainable construction and also consulting here in Costa Rica and also Latin America. Uh, they've undertaken a variety of products from commercial to residential um, uh, throughout Latin America and with a focus in Costa Rica. Roberto joins us today, actually from Nasada, from the beach. Um, hello, Roberto. Hello, Richard. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you as well. How's everything in Nasada? Sunny and beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here in, here in San Jose, it's sunny, but it's a little bit cold this morning. The wind, it's a bit, the wind yeah. is whipping up here. No, it has so, been pretty nice here in good waves. Everything awesome, big. awesome. Well, let's get straight into it, Roberto, because I'm sure that the uh, listeners are adamant to, to, to really get to the, the, the meat of, of this discussion. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're aware, you know, the US stock market is an all-time high. Stimulus money is kind of flying around everywhere in the States. Uh, you know, and people are looking for safe havens to park their money. Um, my question is, is, do you think that Costa Rica is a good place to invest uh, and why? Yeah, I think we, we have a stable political environment and, and, and a stable economy. Also, it's not that you're going to go and buy a property and all of a sudden the government's taking from you, take it from you. So I think that's something that has draw attention to Costa Rica when you, when you talk about investments, if you do it the right way, right? Of course, there's, there, there's things that you have to look at, right, when, when you're doing these kind of investments. I mean, what kind of things would you, be, what kind of things would you advise people to look at before they make these kind of investments? Well, I would advise to do a, a strict due diligence, not only on the legal part, but also on the technical part. And um, sometimes like you fall in love with the property and, and you go right away and, and put your money, money down and then all the problems arise, right? So I think it, it's worth to take, take the time. And when you, when you are committing to do this kind of investments, ask for 30 or 45 days to do full due diligence legally and technical. When I say, legally to make sure that all the titles are in place and, and that it's, if it is a concession land, know what does that mean? If it is a title land, know what, what does that mean? And also knowing that it has the services. Like I, I cannot tell you, tell you how many projects I've, I've seen that they get designed and, and, and everything is, is, is going forward, but then they never thought about a portable water availability. And just that letter will not make the, the project happen. Like wow. we'll stop the project completely. So those things, and then also the technical technical analysis. Like you need to know what in in what area is it, what kind of permits you 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 will require. Also, if there there is a tectonic or an earthquake fault going through through your property, if there is a probability of, probability of slides. Remember that we're in a new land, so slides happen. You need to to make those analysis on on the land that you're buying and make sure that you're not you're not going buying something where you're not going to be able to build. And also knowing the, the local regulations, like for example, there's local regulations here that, that I love that you cannot develop more than 50% of the, of the land. And when you're building projects over a thousand square meters or approximately 10,000 square feet, you need to go through Setena, through the whole Setena process and, and do like environmental impact studies or uh, to make sure that your project is going to be environmentally friendly or at least adhere to our environmental rules. Okay. Okay. You, you'd mentioned their titled land and also concessions. Uh, explain a little, a little bit about that to the readers. What is that? Because I think that potentially, you know, that might be something new to people. Yeah. So, well, in, in Costa Rica, we have a, a, a lands that are very close to the ocean in some areas of the country. They are not titled. They are, they are concessions from, from the government. And, and, and it varies in the, in the amount of years, if I'm correct. This is a, maybe a better question for a, for a lawyer that will know everything. everything we'll we'll get one on it. We'll get one on at some <laughs> point. <laughs> but, but yeah, so, so at the end, you do not own, own a land, but the country gives you the right to use it for a certain amount of years. And when it is a concession land, 
it is well defined what you can when you what you can develop in that land and what type of project some sometimes it is a concession land for a single resident sometimes it's a concession land for tourism activities of low impact tourism activities and so it depends what you are uh, where you, where it is and what type of uh, activity you're looking for that you have to see what that concession allows you to do title land is as, as it is almost everywhere you own the land uh, again you have to adhere to the rules mostly it's going to be the municipality which is a, a subdivided by counties here in costa rica who is going to tell you what can you build for that there's a uh, a document called Uso del Suelo that you request from the municipality and when there is no planes reguladores, eh, how do you say that, eh, zoning plan? Zoning plan, yeah. When, when there are no zoning plans, then the Uso del Suelo is what it's going to tell you what the, what the municipality allow you to develop in those lands. It's not that you can just buy a land and develop a commercial development and, uh, in a residential area. So that's, uh, unluckily, not many municipalities in Costa Rica have a zoning plan. So yep. that's, that's a thing that we need to, that's one of the first documents that you, that I would suggest you request when you are analyzing a property production. It, it sounds like you're probably going to need a very good lawyer if you're going to look at buying here in Costa Rica, correct? Or investing. Correct. And I, I always recommend use a good law firm that, that knows the area and that knows that the, the real estate development because okay. it has it's it's complicated but not as complicated as some people like to say you just you just have to know how how it works and one, once you know how it works it's, it's pretty streamlined but but yeah uh, a good law firm they are not expensive when you ask for a due diligence from a, from from the best law firms in costa rica it's it's not expensive to get a, a, a good due diligence so how much do you think you'd be how much do you think roughly you'd be looking at just roughly just just for our listeners to get, get an idea yeah. Like you know, it, it varies from 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 firm to firm and from the size of the of the of the land, right? If it is yeah. a small lot or a big lot, but I'll have to say for let's say around thousand square meter lots or ten thousand square feet, that's like about a quarter quarter of an acre. Uh, anywhere from fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars. Okay. To do. And that it really helps a lot. Yeah. No, I I mean I you know the, that's it's basically. So you don't have any kind of horror stories when you do actually buy a property. I mean, it's just, you know, be smart, do the due diligence. Um, and, and find a... Go on. No, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was saying, and to find a reputable firm, because that's not easy sometimes. I mean, you're coming to Costa Rica, maybe you've not been before. You know, you see a law office with a sign outside. I mean, I mean, I, I suppose the question would be is to them is to ask them questions about deals that they've done before, how many people are in the law firm, et cetera. Um, and maybe go and maybe ask some construction people as well, you know. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and most of the times when these law firms do the uh, due diligence, they also include the technical due diligence. They have like engineers that they hire so that they do a comprehensive study of the property. Okay. Okay. And there's still, like Costa Rica, like we have a bunch of setbacks, right? For example, there, if there's a creek that runs, even if it is an intermittent creek that runs through your property, by law, we have a setback of 50 meters or 45 feet from the highest part of the of the water. Let's call it like the water highest part. You have yeah. to you cannot build in 45 feet, 50 meters from there. So if you have a creek running through the middle of your property, maybe this is a small property, most likely you won't be able to to build it at, in in any part of that property. So those those types of things are the ones that I always recommend. Or knowing, um, and these are examples that I've seen like that may be the municipality because we have federal and municipal roads and you have to know if these roads have a plan of expansion. I've okay. seen that if you have a public road running in front of your property, that might have a plan of expansion and that might eat up to 10 meters of your property that you didn't, didn't know about. So those yep. are the type of things that you want to know during that due diligence process. Well, I mean, and Costa Rica's building roads like crazy at the moment. So that's probably a good one to, to, to that's a good piece of advice. The, the other one in, in, in Costa Rica, like, uh, environmental, like, delitos, I don't know how, like, environmental crimes yep. are, are judged penal, 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 like, it's like, like, environmental crimes are like, you, you go like, they, 
they they don't they take it very seriously here. Yeah, so well, I mean, even yeah, I mean, Costa Rica's can, built its it's its brand, dude. You know, it's which, it's how it's conserved this country, which we as Costa Ricans love. Yep. Some some people say like, yeah, in Costa Rica, getting the the environmental permit to build takes too long, and sometimes I think that's good. That has stop overdevelopment and and i uh, yeah it, it's a process you just have to learn how to, to make the process and, and know what are you going to develop right like not to do developments that are going to have a uh, negative environmental impact but even do not cut a tree without a permit you can go to jail for that yeah that's that's so, crazy because i mean <laughs> I, you know i've never heard about that you know i'm from the uk i've never heard about that in the uk but i mean costa rica takes its laws seriously when it comes to the environment dude and i, I think that that's great from a I tourism it. point of view it's brand it's you know attracting um you know that, that brings up a question that i have for you because you know i mean when people are typically looking to do something here in costa rica i'm sure that the question going through their mind is should I buy something that's existing and maybe refurbish it or, or, you know, if, and if I can find something decent, you know, maybe I don't need to do it or should I build? I mean, what advice would you give to someone looking to buy versus build? That's a tough one. But, well, I mean, uh, I know you're, you're going to want them to build, but I mean, forget. Not really. <laughs> you it know, depends. But, yeah. And, and I think here there is a mix of uh, direct things to look into. And yep. also psychological things. Some of us are quick uh, making decisions, design decisions. Some yep. of us are very slow making design decisions. It's just a personality trait, right? Yeah. So it's, it's important to understand yourself and sometimes it's better in, to, to buy something that it is existed. So on the technical part and all this, there's areas of Costa Rica where they're not granting any more water availabilities or or they, you cannot develop more than what it, what it has been, what it has been developed already. Yep. So in those cases, I will suggest go to, to, to something existing and you can renovate it. Most of the foreigners in Costa Rica are, are, are investing in rural areas or not in the, in the, the Central Valley, right? Yep. Unluckily, at least my experience, what I've seen is that, that some of these older homes or older buildings that people are like, what you have to look very close into is the MEP system, mechanical electrical and plumbing system, because those are the systems that most of the times are not in good shape and it's go they're going to require uh, an investment to, to get them up to date and, and in, in, in good shape. Structurally, our seismic code, we are, it's something we are very proud of. Uh, so most of the times, the structure of, of existing buildings are in, in good shape. You have to just revise them, but but that's that's something that Costa Rica takes very seriously, the seismic code, because we're in, in a in an earthquake. It's an, we're an earthquake country, right? Even though we don't uh, we don't have that many of them. I mean, there are some, but it's been a while since yeah. we've, had a, we've had a big, big one. Yeah, you know, touch, touch wood, touch wood. <laughs> exactly. But uh, we also follow the NEC code from for electrical part. We we follow NFPA for fire protection. All this, but sometimes uh, some of these buildings were like were not build up to standards on, on those yep. cases so it's, it's important to to make that analysis and i always say even if it is an, a new almost a new project recently built that you're buying most of the time when you buy an existing building house whatever uh, you're going to have to invest a percentage of your investment into making it yours let's go yep. so that's like consider that when you're analyzing between building a new project or existing and and I, and I, from my sustainable point of view, I sincerely prefer to renovate existing buildings than building a new raw land. I prefer to, take, to keep the raw land for, for, for more trees and, and trails and other things rather than buildings. So, uh, but, but both work. Uh, I would say when you are going to, to build or design, same advice that with uh, law firms, get formal companies or formal people doesn't not have to be a, a company it could be an, an individual but do your research on who that individual is ask them about their latest projects go and call the people that they have they have designed or build their the latest projects and see what their experience is i can not explain how many times i've seen people that they go the first time that they oh, i have a friend that he's an architect and he can he can help you or whatever and they go and yeah. then turns into a nightmare like a, a real nightmare but 
uh, the process also takes time. Some, sometimes they will tell you, yeah, you can have your house in 12 months or eight months or whatever. Take into consideration the design process. Like at least in my experience, I, I, I work mostly on, on hospitality projects and, and higher end homes, commercial projects. The least that those projects are gonna take on the design process, at least in my experience, is six months. So yep. take, take those six months into consideration. Like, and, and you can get the permits and all that, that's best case scenario. And then usually construction is gonna be anywhere between six to 12 months for, let's say for a single family home. So you, you're uh, saying that the, the design is gonna take roughly about six months. Is that the permitting within six months as well? Correct, you can okay. do the permitting within, and, and that's best case scenario. Like, okay. Again, it will also depend the pace of the design process that it's uncertain is yep. what we call the conceptual design. When you are, finding what you really like and what you don't like with the architect. Yep. And, and when, I was, uh, when I was also saying about looking for architects and all that, it's important to know who the consultants are gonna be, know, know the engineers, not just the architects, who is going to design my MEP system, who is going to design my structural system. I like, sometimes we even need infrastructure engineers for a home because we need to know if we're in a floating plane, how are we going to, to raise the levels and, and without affecting our neighbors, right? So the, those, those are the type of things that we need to, to take into consideration. It sounds like if you're going to construct, you really, really must want to construct. Yeah, but it's a process and, and it, it's an enjoyable process. I'll have to say, yeah, it's stressful to build and all that, but it's, it's so nice to see something that you had an idea of yeah. coming, back, coming up to life. And, and, and if, if you're doing it the right people, it's it's a it's an it's an easy process. I will not say it. I have not been part, and I think no one has been part of a perfect construction. There will always be change orders. Um, and advice I give to my clients most of the time say, okay, once you sign the contract with a contractor, keep at ten percent on top of that and keep yep. it in your back pocket because there will be change orders, and that way it won't affect you psychologically or financially knowing that you have that on, on, on your back pocket to, Wait, to when you say change orders you mean basically just design just design changes that you've had you know design, or, or you walk into into your house and and you didn't notice that the switches that you had yep. there were pink yep and i hate pink switches i approve <laughs> pink switches so i see them there and now i i want to change them for white switches Yep. So that contractor will say like, okay, if I show you here, my construction document said these were pink switches. Uh, I have to now buy the, the, the white switches and install them. It's going to cost me some labor in, uh, in, the, in the new materials. So this is the change order. And this is going to take me an extra week so that you know that rather than finishing this week, like uh, X week, it's going to be X plus one week. And those, that's what I call in, but it sounds amazing. Almost like the smaller, like not the smaller, the less formal contractors, yep. they will never send you a change order. And that's one of the things that usually make either a renovation or a new building go in, a, in the wrong direction because you cannot control something where you, when, when the contractor is not telling you if changes are happening or not. So please be very, very strict in the change order control. Uh, another thing that I always say when, when, when doing these things, Renders are not formal construction uh, documents, right? Uh, construction documents are the ones that are technical ones. So I've seen a lot of people that they see a render and that's yep. what they buy. They buy a render and then they go to the site and hey, this does not look to the render. So the architect or the contractor goes and say like, yeah, but here in the construction documents, it says how it's going to be. Oh yeah, but I thought it was going to be like the render. So it's important that you take a little bit of time. I know reading construction documents, it's, it's difficult, but at least read the finishes part of the construction documents, right? That, of the drawing, so that you understand what kind of finishes. And something that I recommend is asking, if you're getting renders, asking the architect, when you are about to sign the contract with the contractor, to update the renders. Because one thing are the first renders that you get when you fall in love with the project, Yep. And another thing is after doing the value engineering, getting, getting the project to, to fit the budget, you remove a lot of things. So the renders, most of the time, the initial renders are not close to reality. So if you can do another set of renders with the, with the actual building, that will also save you a couple of headaches. 
Roberto, it sounds like there's a lot of moving parts in construction. So, you know, personally, if I'm in the States or I'm in Europe and I'm thinking, you know what, I want to build my dream house in Costa Rica. I don't want to be the one having to try and coordinate architects and renderings and construction and lawyers. I mean, are there firms that people can go to that can manage all of this for them? Yeah, there's project management, management firms that could manage these kind of things. I always say smaller homes, they shouldn't need a project manager. It's adding more moving parts and more cost to a project. Smaller homes should, like, uh, like architectural firms or architectural individuals, should be able to handle the, the, the project correctly with a, with a good contractor. Uh, it's different in Costa Rica. The inspections are not done by the municipality, as it is in the States, if I'm correct. In Costa Rica, formal inspections have to be done by the, usually it's the design professional. Okay. Uh, that's, that's important, or what we call the director technical, the technical director of the, yep. of the project. So uh, it's important to consider that, that part that there are gonna be inspections and to make sure that they are happening. So to make sure that what is being built goes in accordance to what was designed. It's not only for finishes, it's, this is for what everything that we're saying, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, structural, all that, they need like good, good inspection process. But in case like uh, you're not in Costa Rica or you, like, you want to deal with all this process, of course, there's, there's several project management firms. And at the end, what I, what I say in those cases, it ends up being technical owners rep. That's part of what we end up doing. We represent the clients technically, making yep. sure that what's getting built is what, what, they, what they wanted. And, and most of the cases, what we get is a POA so that we can run all the permitting process and all that. It, and it's not a headache for the, for the client to have to go and, and sign documents every day and sometimes three or four times because you go to the entity and they send it back because the A didn't yeah. look like an A. Yeah, that's happened a few times to me. <laughs> and the other thing that I was going to, to recommend is, is get a formal contractor. Okay, that's super important. Like in Costa Rica, you have to have insurance. You have to have a, you can like, you are not allowed to hire legal people to build your construction. And you have to pay for social security. Of course, a lot of people are gonna tell you, yeah, I can do it for le much less expensive that one, than what that other contractor is, is, is charging you. Okay, but show me that you, oh, you're only hiring legal people that you are on yeah, you have all the insurance and you're paying caja because if not if you find a higher informal contractor because you think it's going to be less expensive yep. if anything goes wrong and please remember that construction is a super super risky business and not with very very risky construction workers die all, all the time in, in, at the job site when and especially when they they do not have occupational safety procedures in, yep. in that on, on luckily it happens with informal contractors which which they are a lot in in rural areas yeah so make sure that the contractor you're hiring is a formal contractor again has good reputation call people that they have built recently uh, so that you are safe because that's one of the main mistakes i've seen the uh, expats take when they when they try to build in Costa Rica like no this contractor it's, it's he, he seems very nice and he gave me a really good price that usually ends up bad so yeah. do uh, get, get a formal contractor and make sure that your architect is the one that's signing the plans because they are the registered architect and that's that's very 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 important that wow. because that's where I'm seeing the most of the problems it sounds like if you're building something not big and maybe we need to find what big is here, but if you're building maybe what a three, four bedroom villa or something, maybe even bigger, I, I don't know, that the architect is very key in this. Yeah. Am I correct? Because again, he, it, so really you should probably be focusing your time and energy on finding a great architect who then also has those contacts and has probably worked with other people, you know, with construction workers, et cetera. Um, you know, so that you don't have to find all these people because it's time consuming. I mean, if you're working up in the States and you're only coming down here for a week or two or something like that, I mean, that's a lot of work to do, no? Correct. Get a, get a good architect and, and it doesn't have to be a big firm to be a big firm or a, or a one-man show or one-person show, uh, but that has a good reputation. Um, there's also, also construction companies that they have their own architects so that you can have a design built all in one package. Yep. You know, uh, but, but yeah, the architect, architectural 
part is the first part that you want to look into or okay. usually it could be also the project management part so that the, that pm or or the technical owners rep is going to find you the team you want to work with yeah uh, that's that's what i've seen more and more in in, in at least in, in these areas uh, in coastal areas one thing that i was going to say i had right written here in my notes when, when you're designing centralized aces versus mini splits right it's a, a small topic but it's an important <laughs> one okay we i think it's good to say that almost all of us we hate the small mini splits yep in our rooms or living rooms they they stick out and they they kind of ruin the, the hey, nice view right i've got one right here <laughs> but uh, when you install a centralized AC system. I'm sure a lot of the suppliers are, are gonna look at me like, where to? But, <laughs> but, but like the experience have taught me that those centralized AC systems are going to fail on December 31st at 6 p.m. when we your occupancy is 100% occupancy, and then you call the supplier like nobody will answer the phone, so you have like a like a full villa that renting for a very good price because that's the best week where you're renting or a full hotel or whatever. Yep. And no one is going to give maintenance to that on, on, on the same day. So instead of a mini split system, when you're uh, away from the city, just keep one, you know, like an, an extra one in the maintenance bodega. And yep. anyone can replace those things. So those, those are the things that at least I have learned the, the hard way. So you heard it, guys. Mini split systems, not centralized <laughs> AC. I mean, but like for bigger hotels and stuff like that, do centralized. But for well, homes, sometimes it's like... Well, as you know, we have a villa in Playa del Coco, an eight room, very large, you know, villa up in Playa del Coco in the mountains. And we had a split system and we had it rented out and very, yeah, again, on the 20th of December, you know, the AC kind of kicked out and nobody picked up the phone. So we rushed out and bought a mini split and had our maintenance guy install the mini split there, you know. And from that, we were just like, you know what? We're putting split systems in all rooms from from here on forwards. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. you know, that I've heard it so many times that Richard did. Right? And another thing is, do not <laughs> believe what the brokers or designers tell you that, that the product is going to cost. <laughs> I was about to ask you here <laughs> is if you were to build a, say, uh, like a 2,000 square foot house, how much would it cost? But, but let, let's get there in a minute. Okay. Yeah. You know, why, 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 why do you say that? <laughs> but uh, my experience is usually that the designers and brokers have a cost per square meter of construction that it, it ends up not being the actual one. And, and it could be due to a variety of reasons and also to how we see construction. I see construction costs should include, include everything from the design cost to the construction and, and like once you're ready to, to use the space, right? But uh, most of the times they like I, I see clients that come like yeah they told me that in Costa Rica it's super cheap to build uh, <laughs> it, you can build for 600 or 500 dollars per square meter or let's call it 50 dollars per, per square foot that's not true it's impossible and uh, a, a contractor friend once told once told me like okay, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you an example and this was for a project in Santa Teresa have you gone out here in Santa Teresa and eaten a burger yeah several times how much does that burger cost? Anywhere from eight to twenty-five dollars, right? That that's the cost of a hamburger there. It's yep. Costa Rica is an expensive country. It is. So so, <laughs> and then he's like, yeah. So how much does eating a hamburger where you're coming from, all the states, Europe, wherever, it's usually very similar, right? That that, that cost you can you can get a a, a good burger for twenty dollars or something like that. What makes you think? that construction is going to be Any 10 cheap. times less expensive yeah. than what you're building. But yeah, I say on average for high-end homes, that that's like when I work in homes, it's usually higher, higher end homes. The cost of construction per square foot ranges, let's say from 160 to $230 per square foot or in meters, $1,800 per square meter to $2,300 per square meter. But I mean, Including people are probably everything. getting top of the line stuff for that money, though, no? Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, as I say, high, high end, really good materials, really good finishes, uh, like top, top of the line. You can build nice projects here in 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 rural areas because when I say rural areas or coastal areas, it's because it is much more expensive than the Central Valley. Yeah. Most of the things in Costa Rica, like 
professionals and, and materials and all that come from the central valley. So for, for twelve to thirteen hundred dollars per square meter or 130 per square foot. Yep. Uh, that that is something I, I can feel com I say comfortably, but lower than that it's it's really hard. Also the indirect costs in that are that are like the engineer and, and importing and all that are more expensive when you're doing it in coastal areas. Yeah. Well I mean you know Again, you mentioned Santa Teresa there. You're joining us from Nasara today. It sounds like you get you get you get around quite a bit, and I know that you've done projects all over the country. I mean, in your opinion, where do you think are the areas that are seeing kind of most most growth at the moment? You know, what's where are the where are the hot areas? Because I know Nas I don't know whether Nasara still is, but it used to be like you know raging hot, right? I mean, there was a lot of people moving there, a lot of building. Every time I go there, there's always construction happening. It is still like that, like. You, every every block you drive, you see a construction happening at least or a renovation. It's it's, it's crazy. I think it, it's very it's beautiful. And uh, with COVID, when like everyone was thinking like oh like uh, construction is gonna go down and development and, and all this, it actually went up. And that's something that I, it's something I do not say very happy because we want to to keep the hey, development is needed, but keep it at a steady pace and not and not sustainable. You don't want to see Exactly, in a sustainable way. You don't want to see yep. peaks happening and, and, and building it all out because what we love about these areas are nat is nature, right? Yep. Um, so so it's, it's tough to see when people come here because I love the trees and I love to see the monkeys running through, through, through my property and all this and all of a sudden, yeah, and you're going to build and you just cleared the whole lot to build a house that you're going to use for one month a year. That, that makes no sense. So I have a friend, like we have a friend in common that always says not building is luxury. And yep. that's true. Like understand where you really need to build because the luxury of these this, this areas are not building and that outdoor indoor integration is what's really, really important. And that's, that's at the end, that's what you came here for. I understand a lot of people are fleeing from the, from, from the cities. We got this phenomenon that we th thought it was going to take 10 to 20 years to happen on the, of, of the working from home part, it, COVID just made it faster to happen, right? Yeah. So everyone, we know, we all understood, like in, in my office, we're 18 and we're all working from home for one year already almost. So yep. and productivity is still the same or in some cases even better. So we understand that, that, that we can go and work from anywhere. And that's, that's what we're seeing, that phenomenon of people from big cities trying to find, selling their, their place in the city and trying to find a place here where they can, where they can work. Um, I, and I see like a need for work, workspaces as well. There's some of us that we cannot work from home, but we want to be here and have a space where we can work. That's, that's something that I see a, a thing that's coming up. Yeah, I, th I think in, unless, uh, you know, if you're able to separate that work, you know, from home, a lot of divorces will happen. So I think my wife is ready to kick me out, but uh, I'm, I'm, dying, I'm dying to get back to an office. But, but I mean, apart from Nasada, which other areas are you seeing huge amounts of growth in? I think the Playa Grande area is yep. getting a lot of traction. It's close to the Liberia airport. It has nice waves. It's a, it's a it's a reserve. I think areas that have reserves and national parks and stuff like that are always sick, sick, and sick. Yeah, people, people are seeking for those, right? yep. seeking for because you know that those areas will never be de developed, and you have that, and, and that that adds a lot of value. I've seen lately people selling lots, in the, uh, and something that I, that I haven't seen before that they sell lots with beautiful trees more expensive than the lots that do not have like so people are adding value to those trees which i which i really that's like that's great so, that's great uh, but yeah i think that that area of course limon has always been been attractive in in a certain way i think puerto viejo is, is getting traction and there's there's a typical one like you know manuel antonio has always been attractive to for, for tourism um i like where do you think where do you think the opportunity is because i mean again i was in mammal antonio yesterday you know i spend my whole you know i'm in guanacaste next week you know i'm always on the road here you know talking to people in the industry and also you know the hotel owners and also in tourism you know mammal antonio i saw a bunch of houses there being built and a lot of people are going in buying older stuff that's there because i mean that destination has been around since you know the 90s so a lot of the stuff there's older so a lot some people are going in buying and refurbishing but I mean, apart from the main tourist areas, I mean, wh wh where else are you seeing are you seeing growth? Well, I, I was having a conversation yesterday. I'm hearing like La Fortuna in San Carlos is getting a lot of traction as well. Yep. The Arenao, like, yeah. Like, 
mountain areas are, are getting, getting like small towns in Cartago, stuff like that. People, people are, are starting to love those areas very much. So it depends on what you're looking for, right? In what stage of your life are, are you like, if you want, you're looking for more vibrant communities and stuff like that, you can sink, sink it in, into, in, into Tamarindo or stuff like that, where you know, like there's a bunch of restaurants, there's everything is available. Or if you're looking for places that are a little bit more quiet and you want to go into the hills, or you're looking for surf, but with, with not, not big crowds, you start looking at areas that might not have been developed. You will not have like the commodities of having very good supermarkets or restaurants or whatever, yeah. but you have like that fact that. So it's hard to say which ones because we are all different. And, and also we can see uh, with, uh, without generalizing too much, but we can see that different countries want different things when they travel, right? Um, so what, what at the other day I was reading this, this uh, digital nomads or digital travel nomads article, I think, yep. I, I don't know if I think we shared, we shared it on that WhatsApp group that we have that. Yep. What we have to understand is it's our responsibility to respect and keep the culture of the place, right? If I go to Costa Rica, I want to try a casal. What is a casal? What's our typical typical food plate and, and stuff like that and, 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 and not try to replicate what everyone's doing in other places because at the end, traveling ends up being going to one place that looks the same as the, as the other one that's on, on the other side of the globe, you know, like, so, so it's kind of that respecting the culture. We always say like when we do a, a, a project, it has to be sustainable and sustainability is not just a balance between the environment, the economy and the social part, but it's also the cultural part. Understand the culture where you understand the culture where you're building, respect it, and 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 bring it into your project. Yeah, in, that that's that's super important to me. Uh, also, uh, when you say bring it into your project, what do you mean? That's interesting. Uh, I've never heard that before. So what what we do is that we do a, a thorough research of the culture of the place that we're going to do the development, and then we then we create like our design guidelines. Before we even start throwing one line, yep. we, those are the design guidelines and we integrate culture into those design guidelines so that it, it is part of when, when I'm going to start designing, I have to think, okay, I'm in the Nicoya Peninsula. Nicoya Peninsula has a, this X, Y, and C culture things, cultural things. Okay, how do I think my project that is going is to look this way? So those, those type of things are, are, are important. And then on the environmental part, I know we all want to see the sunset from our home. We all yeah. want to, to see the ocean, but that usually means that you are, you're placing your building facing west. You're gonna have a glass house, super hot glass house for about eight hours a day for a 15 minute window of, of sunset, right? And yeah. then you'll be, cranking the, the AC and spending a lot of money in electricity. Electricity in Costa Rica is expensive for that. So make sure that you design places with very, very long eaves since like uh, to block the sun from entering the spot, the, 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 the places that you're designing. Also insulation is key. People never think about insulation in Costa Rica. 90% of our heat gain comes from the roof. Yep. Get a very well insulated roof, yeah. It will be more expensive than a typical roof, but you're gonna save it in the operations of that building in a second. Yeah. Uh, hot water, we can use solar, solar thermal systems that are solar water. If you do not have AC in your house, about 40% of your electric bill comes from, uh, from, from the hot water part. But you can install a hot water system for $1,200, $1,400, that's gonna give you hot water for free for the whole year. It's incredible. Right? I mean, I mean, we get, I mean, basically we get, I mean, in Guanacaste, I always say it gets 365 days of sun a year, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, use it. And they all have a backup system. Like if they do not reach the temperature that you want to, to, to reach, yep. they have a backup system that, that will cover that Delta. Then photovoltaic systems. When, when I started my, uh, this company, let's say the cost per installed watt, was about six six dollars fifty. Nowadays, it's about one dollar and twenty five cents wow. or less in some cases. And you can even lease it. You don't have to buy it. It makes sense. Uh, materials. Know what type of materials. I always say sustainability is durability. So know what type of materials when you are building close to coastal areas. The marine breeze 
it's even worse than building your your project in the ocean <laughs> because that marine bris is gonna it's gonna uh, corrode everything so be very very careful on what type of materials you're you're selecting for your project because then maintenance could be a nightmare a nightmare and, it, and i don't want it to, to sound to sound wrong right <laughs> like there's a bunch of projects happening and, and it's just things that you have to take into consideration so, so that it, it it all goes correct and then it's easy for you and you and you're enjoying a, a a nice building for for the rest of the life right yeah well, I mean, this is great information, Roberto. Thank you very much. I mean, some of the, you know, I, I'm even learning stuff on, on, on this call. So, so thank you. And yeah. I'm sure, you know, uh, a, a lot of the guests are going to have a bunch of questions. So if anything in the comments, uh, I'll make sure that you're uh, kept up to date on that. And I'd love to get you kind of back on this, you know, uh, in a couple of months um, and maybe grab yeah. some of the, some of their questions. I, yeah, I, do I, have, can... I do have my final question for you, which I ask everybody on, on this podcast. If you'd inherited five hundred thousand dollars and you had to invest it into Costa Rica, where you know where would you invest it, and why? Oof, that's a tough question, right? <laughs> where, where would your where would your head invest it, and where would your heart invest it? You know, what's the the smart head the head thing to do? But where where is your heart? Okay, so. Like I'll, I'll say, the question was: If you have five hundred thousand dollars, will you invest in Costa Rica? I would no, say you, absolutely yes. But well, I'm saying, yes, I'm saying you have to. You inherit it. Uh -huh. Your great aunt or your parents said you need to invest it in Costa Rica. Hmm. Right now, I, I think. Well, since I'm living in Nasara, that's that's my heart. I love the community here. I love what like so. Uh, I, I'll have I'll have to say that, and uh, and I I love the waves here. If not. There's some some other areas. I think another one that the the one that I said, Playa Grande. There's yep. some really nice opportunities there, and, and I might invest there as well. Awesome. Those awesome. Are my team. Well, that's great information, Roberto. We really thank you. Thank you for your time today. Um, and guys, remember if you are if you're enjoying these podcasts, please subscribe. Uh, and Roberto will get you back on very soon. Appreciate your time, okay. dude. Thank you, Rich. Take Catch care. you later. Bye. Bye.